Bill, congratulations for Dreaming Wild. Thank you. It is such a great, terrific film um, as your sophomore film after uh, Love and Mercy. But uh, tell tell us why you wanted to stick in this genre of like these uh, mu musical biopics. Well, I don't. Another, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't strategic, like picking this movie. I was honestly, you know, set to do a different movie, not music related when Dream and Wild came along as a possibility. Um, so it wasn't strategic, like I want to do all music movies, even though I'm a frustrated musician and, and would love the opportunity to work in music as much as I can. Um, but that wasn't the goal here or uh, the strategy, so. So then how did this uh, project uh, came about that um, in development um, for you then? Um, you know, it was pitched to me by a good friend of mine, uh, Jim Burke, who produced Green Book and, and, and other films. Uh, uh, he pitched it to me as a, to be a, as a director. Um, and when he pitched it, I said, no, I said, this is not the movie I would want to do next. And, and it, by the way, it sounds a lot like search, searching for Sugar Man. And I, you know, didn't really want to do that again. I mean, I love that movie and I felt like they did a pretty good job uh, on that. Um, so I, I said no, but he insisted that I read the longer article. Um, uh, I don't know if you know the, yeah, the Fruitland article. Um, so I did that and, and he urged me to uh, listen to the music and I did. And of course, baby and kind of, all the music kind of drew me in. Um, but eventually it was really meeting Donnie, the real Donnie um, and Joe in person that really convinced me, really intrigued me and, and hooked me. Um, Cause I mean, I, you know, I guess meeting them was really life changing in a way because, you know, they are such real people in other words they you know and the whole family as i later learned um you know are just so real it's it's weird to say that but they really are i mean whatever in this business and and traveling around you meet a lot of different people and and uh and in the movie business they're often you know have they're affected in some way and and I can honestly say that the Emersons were the most authentic, unaffected people I've met. Um, and I really admire them for, again, the way they behaved in this story, you know, that ended up creating the story. Um, and like all along, uh, the, again, the Emersons that I met at the beginning of the process versus the Emersons I know now, there is no difference. Mm -hmm. Even though they've had this movie made about them and all this hoopla, I mean, they're, they're like totally unaffected by it, which is really extraordinary. That, that is awesome to hear. Um, I, I want to know is how do you approach a film, a biopic film like this? Because it almost, when you approach something like this, it's almost like creating like a like a documentary i mean how do you have the emersons open up you know their personal lives to you and write their story uh i don't know i mean first of all i kind of during love and mercy i mean i would always bristle at the reference to a biopic because i didn't i didn't intend uh love and mercy to be a biopic in other words i was more interested because i feel like people making biopics, they're a slave to everything that happens in like the Beach Boys history or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I really wanted to focus on just a couple chapters of Brian's life so you could get more intimate with that character. Um, and so I think the same is true uh, here for Dream and Wild. I wanted to be able to get more intimate with Donnie and the whole family. And as opposed to like telling the whole story from start to finish. Obviously, I cheated a little bit in the sense that 
you know, you're able to flash back. I mean, part of the film is being able to flash back to when they were younger. So, but that's all in an, in a uh, way of trying to get closer to the, the characters and what drives them. So now in, in films like this, um, how much of it you have to fictionalize to make it uh, more interesting um, for a story like this? Well, I tried to do as little as possible is what I would say. Because, I mean, really, I, I do think uh, I was committed to um, kind of presenting or portraying the authenticity of this family. That's why I was doing it. Like the 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 second chance story or the music itself were interesting to me, but that wasn't the reason I was making it. It really was the desire to kind of portray and flesh out um, this family and how they behave with each other, the dynamics um, between them, uh, how they interrelate. So I, I tried to keep that as true as possible. And I, I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, in the sense that, uh, you know, it would be easy to like turn this into a, you know, Hollywood ending where they, you know, get the re-release of the movie or the music and then they become superstars or whatever, but that's not what, what happened. And so rather than falling back on that tro trope, I just, you know, you just celebrate the reality of the situation and, and celebrate it for what it is, like real life. This is what happens in real life as opposed to this is, you know, a Hollywood ending or a storybook ending. Now, part of the uh, authenticity is to uh, to have this uh, production on the actual Emerson Farm. Could you talk about that? And was the recording studio the original recording studio, or you have to recreate that? Uh, well, I mean, again, first of all, it was a huge opportunity and a huge benefit to shoot actually on the farm. Uh, so that is definitely true. And we took advantage of that as much as possible. We shot in Joe's house, the interior of Joe's house, uh, the rehearsal space. That's all the real house. Um, when it came down to the practice place, we had an, so much shooting in there that we didn't want to mess with the real place. Like, you know, film crew comes in, you know, often takes down walls or something like that, messes with the place. And I really almost had too much respect for the, the place to do that. So we did build a replica of the interior um, of the practice place, but the rest of it is as as it really was. So, most excellent. And Bill, one more thing uh, before I, I leave you is uh, tell us how important it is to have uh, Donny Donny's new music incorporated into your film. Uh, it's incredible, incredible. And to, honestly, when you're as a writer, when I wrote the, the story and the script, you know, you want a happy ending, so to speak. Again, on, on this kind of thing, a happy ending, you know, wasn't going to be the Hollywood ending, wasn't the big hoopla of some Hollywood thing. Um, you know, in some ways, uh, their story plays out in a very simple way. But I thought, you know, to really capture it to be able to have Donnie write a song for the end of the movie where the bro brothers play together or in this case the brothers and Nancy play together uh you know it was a dream that this would happen but you know often that stuff doesn't work out honestly during the shooting uh, of the film it was a difficult time for Donnie to see his life kind of played out on the screen or by actors. And so he, you know, was more standoffish during the shooting of the film, but he totally re-engaged once he saw that things were, you know, in a good place. And uh, so he, you know, the idea of him writing music for it became more real. Um, and then eventually he and Nancy wrote the music you hear for the end and and so it was a huge uh perfect ending 
for the movie and, and it real in the way, you know, in some ways, uh, despite the non Hollywood kind of ending, you want some kind of payout or some kind of uh, resolution for uh, a movie. And, and since we weren't going to have that big Hollywood thing, in some ways, the post movie, the movie itself and the way it plays out in the world um, is the payoff, hopefully, that at some point, maybe they get recognized as in, for the work they do. And so to have uh, an original song recently recorded by them, um, that puts that in a good position for them and for us and the movie, hopefully. Absolutely. It's a it's a beautiful ending to a beautiful movie. Bill, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation with us. I can't can't thank wait you. to see what you do next. Thank you. All right. Thank you.